In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create a knockback or a force uh, push, an explosion force for your explosions, and also uh, allow you to be able to customize the um, explosion force and, of course, the radius as well. This video will be mostly for beginners, uh, anyone that's new to Unity and never used it before. Um, so be patient and I'll try not to waste too much of your time but I'll try to explain as much as I can at the same time <laughs> anyways uh, without further ado guys let's get right into this awesome tutorial all right so we're gonna create an explosion knockback or an explosion force as some would say uh, so first thing we're gonna do is I have a little scene here set up where the camera is just off to the side here and I have a couple of cubes with some rigid body attached to really test to make sure that this works um, properly so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna create a quick little bomb and my bomb is just gonna be consist of a sphere and I'm just gonna go ahead and zero out the locations and then I will simply just bring it up above just a little bit so as I play it will just fall right into the middle and then create that explosion so uh, next step is to add a rigid body <clears throat> that way it would actually fall you can see here if I play the game at this point um, this should be all I have here it just falls voila great <laughs> perfect so um, what I'm gonna do is now I'm just gonna create a quick little script to take care of adding that explosion um, pushback that knockback that force that I'm talking about so I'll go ahead and create a new C sharp script I'm going to name the script bomb. Then I'm just going to double click on it to open it up. And here it is. Um, nothing is in there. It's just an empty script. All right. Perfect. So I have a little pack that I've downloaded here called the cartoon effects. Um, I think it's called war effects. All right. So I've downloaded this pack right here. Um, which comes with some muzzle flash, dust, debris, and of course a few explosions that I'm going to use in this tutorial. So feel free to get yours, or um, you can also get the Unity um, explo uh, a Unity uh, particle um, example, which has a lot of great uh, explosion effects in there, as well as some other effects. So um, have your explosions ready, and let's get right back into the script. So in the script here, first thing is I need to create that uh, variable that will hold the explosion that I will spawn in to replace uh, my uh, my bomb. So let's go ahead and we'll make a public variable. It's going to be a type of a game object. And I'll just call mine XP for explosion. We are going to need a couple of other variables here to kind of fully be able to customize the explosion. Um, for example, a radius and perhaps a force, like an explosion force and a radius. So let's go ahead and make those as well. So we'll say a public um, float, and I'm going to call it explosion force, so XB force. And I'm just going to create a radius as well. So in case you don't know what this does, just having a comma here. Um, that's useful when you're making two variables of the same type. So instead of me having to type another public float for radius, I just put a comma and then the other name of the other variable. So here I have three variables for um, just setting up that explosion as I want. Um, what I'm going to do next is just do a on a on collision enter. So uh, as soon as the bomb hits the ground, boom, right? So let's head back into that. So I've, I've also just erased the start function and the update function because I'm not going to be using those. So on collision enter. And the way on collision enter works is it's a little callback that happens when uh, an object with a collider and another object with a collider touches each other. Unity automatically calls this function for you if it's in your script. So it sends you the information here in the parameter of what the other object 
um, that collision. That information is represented right here by this variable. So I always like to rename it to other because represent what that other thing is. Um, but this is not really important unless you want to set some sort of condition where um, it only explode if it hits a player with a certain tag or certain name. In this example, though, I'm just going to have it explode regardless. So I'm not going to set any conditions in here. So to make it explode, I'm simply just going to say um, instantiate where do I want it to explode or what do I want to explode? Like what am I creating a clone of? And that will be this game object, obviously, right here, which I call it XP. Now I have to tell it where and I'll say transform dot position. So at the position right here, wherever this thing just collided with something and then the rotation, I'll also just say transform dot um, rotation. Now, when you spawn something in, um, what you're doing here with instantiate is creating a clone of an original object. Um, that object, even though it exploded, it it's just an explosion and the uh, particles disappear. It will still kind of stay in your scene unless you delete it as well. So to be able to delete something when you spawn it in is you need a reference to the object that you just spawned in. So to create that, we just got to put game object and then we'll give it a name such as maybe uh, underscore XP. And then we'll set it to the game object that we're spawning in. So later on, <coughs> we can just come in here and then say uh, destroy. Oops, sorry for the caps. Um, destroy. And then we'll give it the underscore XP. So we're going to destroy that. And then after about three seconds we're going to destroy it so let's kind of like test this for right now where it is just kind of want to see that the explosion shows up at least so we'll just save it if i head back to unity here's my um bomb the sphere that has the bomb oh it doesn't have the bomb script on it but <clears throat> i'm just gonna rename it bomb and then we'll go ahead and just put that bomb script on it and you see it's looking for like a bomb or explosion um so looking for the explosion uh, uh, preset or prefab or variable. So I'm just going to go ahead and search right here for what we have. And this is actually a good one, the big one here. I'll drag it and connect it. So, of course, connect to yours. And so far, the radius and explosion force doesn't really have anything. I'm going to set it to 500. And radius, I might set it to about 8. I mean, right now, we're not even using those variables, but... Just kind of want to set it so I don't forget it later. And I'll play. Boom. Explosion. Now one other thing is that we're not cleaning up the bomb itself. So this is how a lot of um, video games work. It's not like the object actually explodes. Um, you just got to delete it afterwards, of course. So I'll type destroy. And all I got to say is here, destroy game object. And I'm actually going to have that one destroy immediately. So it's not actually going to wait the three seconds af um, after this one is destroyed to actually destroy this one. Both of these um, lines of code will actually go off at the same time. While one is waiting, the other will fire off. So it will cause the bomb to be destroyed immediately, even though the explosion will destroy itself afterwards. The bomb is gone. And here's the explosion clone. And then the explosion clone goes away with it uh, after about three seconds. However, we don't have that knockback, that force, which is what this tutorial is mainly about. So we're going to get into that one right now. Let's do that. So now let's create a, a function here to do our knockback. And I'll just call it uh, void knockback. And after we, right when we spawn in the explosion, we also want to call our knockback. And I made it a separate function uh, just in case. You guys want to be able to do something personal with it as well. You don't have to um, be under certain like restrictions because I made a certain way and you're not you're not too sure how you, how to make it. Um, I don't want you to think that you had to make it inside the same um, collision enter function. So it's a separate function now. It's kind of like more independent. And when you make it this way, you know, feel free to do whatever you want with it. All right, so what we're going to want to do is detect all the object around us and those that have a uh, rigid body will add force to them. So we're going to detect all the colliders. So we're going to create 
a um, collider and it's going to be a an array of colliders so we're detecting all of them and we'll just give it a name um, uh, let's see I'll just say lowercase colliders like that I'll just give it a name that's the name I'm gonna give it for now and we're gonna say equal and then with the command physics you can do a overlap sphere and inside here, um, we got to tell it where the sphere will begin to, I guess, expand. And we're going to tell it from right here where the um, bomb is. So our transform that position. And then how big is it going to be? We need the radius. And we already created a variable just for that. So there we go. We put that radius in. And we're good. So now we've collected all the data on all the colliders around us in here. And we need to loop through this and do something with all the colliders that are in there. So we're going to create that for each loop. And we're going to say for each loop. Now we'll put parentheses collider. Because that's the type of data we're looking for inside of these loops. And um, we can just call these our nearby. These are all the nearby, and then we say in our list of colliders now, which is colliders, this one right here. Okay, so we're now accurately looping through all that list of colliders, and we're going to call it nearby. We want to make sure that they have a uh, rigid body before we try to like add force to them. So here's what we want to do, is we'll create a rigid body variable. We'll say rigid body. And I'll just call it ridge. And that ridge is going to equal to all of our nearby colliders. And then we'll say get component from those colliders. So each one individually, um, because we're in that root loop, we're getting that component. Um, ridge body, just like that. And then we're going to say if that ridge body, right? is not equal no and then we're gonna add force to it so i want to make sure that it's not no before we try to add force to it um so we're not wasting our time or any of our programming processes okay so now um the simple way to add force um you can add force using maybe a negative value but unity was so kind to us um they added a add force way to like uh, i believe it's called add explosion force um and i'm very common with using like an add force but do check it out guys there's tons of different add force or add in certain different types of energy here um that you can use which unity was very kind and one of them being explosion force so it knows already how to um render that kind of force so it add so with add the so with the add um explosion force and I sorry I having a hard time talking today because <coughs> I think I'm coming now with something but anyways not the corona um for the uh, the first element here you can see in the intelligence it's looking for like an explosion force and as you can see we were way, way ahead of the game we created that already we even set the value inside the inspector already so after that um. After that parameter, it needs where, I guess, where the uh, the explosion is going to um, start from. Because you can't have it start somewhere else, not exactly right here. But we do want it to start right here. So we're going to say transform.position. And then finally, the value here is the radius of how big it's going to get. And so we already created a radius. Um, we'll use that same radius. So it'll be the same radius size. Why not? And that's pretty much it. So I hope this, uh, I really hope this makes sense to you guys um, before we test it here. Um, again, this channel is all about really making sure that you understand what you're watching. So there might be a lot of other tutorials out there that does this and might have done it similar. But um, it's important that I, uh, it's important that in this channel, when you, when you see it, um, you really understood what you wrote. So uh, just a quick recap, we created a list of of colliders and we've captured all the nearby colliders that we're overlapping 
um, within a certain radius and we're reusing that radius for the bomb as well um, we go through that full list um, we store all the uh, rigid body in the word ridge um, per loop so every time we loop we do this check boom but of course the loops happen so quickly it's just gonna look like it happened all at once okay so we're just gonna save at this point and head back to unity and I don't believe um, I need to do any setups. Looks like we already have numbers in here. Radius is about eight. Force is about 500. I'll turn it up to about eight. Why not 800? And so now when it falls, we should see some force. I'm just gonna add, it, add a little bit more height to it. And let's play. Boom. <laughs> and there it is. Now we have some accurate explosion force. And you can see that even if, um, if I turn it down, let's say about 300, um, it we're gonna have less stuff less of you know such a big impact look at that they kind of just rock a little bit so now you have full control over creating your explosions and your grenades and your you know whatever it is you're gonna make with your your knockbacks um, full control is in your hands at this point and I hope you enjoy this video guys and have a good one see you later